Well, I was not aware of the fact that uh, you know it has to be a podium speech for 10 minutes on the subject, but uh, more of a conversation. Uh, but I think it was very insightful of you know what I heard from uh, each of the panelists, and uh, it's an absolute delight to be part of this panel where you know you have. I think the mix here is uh, very eclectic. Somebody represents an university which is known for, I think, the first example of private investment into academia. You know, Bits Plani is a finest example of imagine a technological institution of such high repute starting off many, many years back in one of the remotest part of the country. We have representatives from VCs from two of the uh, new age private universities. And of course, uh, we have uh, representation from the industry from Microsoft. Again, what she spoke of, the kind of investment, the kind of thought process, and Microsoft being one of the largest organization globally, not only limited to their aim in profit, but you know, they have been consistently doing work for the society, for academia, and there are numerous such examples you know, which is there. <clears throat> so I represent an organization which is more from the consulting space. Uh, I've been since I was told that I need to tell a little bit more about uh, myself. So I've been a banker. I've uh, been part of the insurance industry, and it's been more than a decade that I'm part of uh, this industry called international property consulting. So I represent an organization called Savills, which is uh, almost a 170-year-old organization, and we started our operation in India five years back. But there are many other players who are there in this industry. Uh, like Jones Lang Lazal, where I used to work earlier. I set up the HR function there, and now I lead the people function uh, for Savills. Uh, there's Sibi Richard Ellis, Kushman Wakefield. Why I'm taking these names is they're fairly large global conglomerate. And one of the biggest challenge that we as an industry today face is lack of talent. And from the time for more than a decade, I think that's consistently one thing that you know, we have dealt with. And one of the key reasons is probably there are not enough of the kind of talent that we expect or we need are being produced from academia or from university. Now, I will share my thoughts around, since we are talking of bridging the gap between classroom and industry, and uh, you know, how do we, uh, and the partnership we are talking about academia and uh, industry. To me, I think even today, and specifically in India, the gap is still pretty huge. I, I understand that we are talking of NEP, the new education policy. There are various thoughts which are there. But in terms of real-time partnership, I think there's a long, long way that we need to go. Uh, I travel quite a bit. I love speaking in various forums. I interact with a lot of uh, you know, students across the university. But one thing time and again comes out is the gap which is visible in terms of it it just looks like as if you get transported in a very different world okay i mean today we are talking of things which are changing at a very very fast pace you know we are talking of ai we are talking of uh, you know machine learning we are talking of chat gpt there's so many things you know we are talking of you know it's a changing fast paced world now if you really look into you know academia how much of it forget about courses you know, which basically brings in some of these elements, but how much of it is really, you know, uh, visible in the working of, uh, in the working of the academia world? I mean, how much of, for example, if we talk of AI, today AI as a tool is being used in HR, it's being used, I mean, I'm talking of any private enterprise, in sales, in predictive science, in a lot of, you know, usage which is there. Do we really see the degree of usage in, uh, you know, in the in the uh, in the academia world in India, probably not as much as it would be. It should be. Uh, now, when you talk about gaps, I think gaps are there at various level. Uh, you know, we talk about. Uh, you know, we spoke about the different kind of partnership interaction that need to happen or sh happens between industry, uh, uh, you know, and academics. One of the key elements, I think, is limited to internship. And we spoke here about internship. And very rightly pointed out, uh, you know, where we said that, you know, today, even today, the, the, the interaction with industry is limited to 
uh, internship, which is a must to be done for some of the courses. It is limited to some of this kind of interaction. You know, you have conferences, you have uh, guest lectures. But do we really strive to, you know, bring in industry where, you know, we have leaders coming in and trying to give mentorship to students? There's a huge sense of contribution that everybody has within themselves. You know, they really want to contribute. People do want to contribute. I mean, there's so much of lack, you know, which is there in everybody's life. Are we trying to address, academia is trying to address that element and bringing in people at various level of interaction, you know, in terms of mentorship so that students are more ready to face the, you know, the new world, the, uh, the in I mean, the, to face the industry, you know, once they come out of uh, the university. I mean, I've been in the banking world. I think, you know, where our biggest strive is to come out with finishing school. You know, when we used to talk of finishing school, we used to say that, uh, you know, it's more in terms of private bankers getting ready to face the real world of private banking. Because what you come with as an education don't really take you to where you are supposed to deliver. In our industry, for example, uh, you know, it's a, it's a real estate consulting industry. We have been consistently, for example, hiring students from institutions like School of Planning and Architecture. Uh, I mean, I've, uh, uh, you know, we realize that the kind of people that we need in our industry is just not there. The first expectation was come up with the short-term courses for students of SPA. You know, we came up with a three months program, we invested on it. Still, it was not enough. Then we went we, to some of the private uh, you know, universities, and finally, we came up with a joint program. Now, why do you invest on a joint program? Because what is available as a curriculum is not good enough for the talent that we need for our industry. You need to invest once somebody comes in, and there is always that time period that you need to give before somebody is ready to start delivery. Now, that's the time period which is, might not be available in a lot of industry. Okay? And many of this fast-pacing industry are, uh, uh, you know, look very different. They're margin-driven. You know, there's only that much investment they can do. Uh, I think in terms of investment, uh, endowment fund is completely missing in India. You know, today, if you really look at uh, US, UK, you know, in today's world, uh, and don't mind my saying so, but except I think IIT Chennai and, you know, some of these places where, uh, you know, you have alumni, you have some, you know, a lot of private investment which has happened, but, you know, it is, if you want to invest, come out with a new university. I might as well, because that becomes, that's more of a profit-making, uh, 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 you know, dream that you have. Because if you come out with, you invest in, I mean, in academics, where you invest through a new university. I mean, there are so many private universities which has mushroomed in the last 15 years, if you really look at. Now, is it really, but which is very different from what is happening outside. You know, it is more in terms of investment in research. It is more investment in new technology. You come out with a new school within, uh, you know, some of the well-known universities. Do we really see that kind of, you know, investment endowment, you know, funds coming in? The answer is no. Okay, I mean, it's 300 billion is the, is the amount they talk of in U.S. today, which is there on endowment funding. Hardly anything is there in a place like India. So I think, I mean, I can, uh, again, I think it's a very touchy point, even in terms of what do you pay to a, uh, you know, uh, to a highly qualified professor? There's a huge gap between industry and, uh, you know, academia. Nobody, nobody talks about it. I mean, for example, personally speaking, uh, I mean, I, I love talking about it. I have my co-brother. He is IIT. I am worked in U.S. Suddenly, one day, he decided to do his PhD. Went to uh, INSEAD, completed his PhD, joined one of the IIMs. Very well-known professor. But 20 years back, what was his salary? Till today, he's not getting that. Okay, so, you know, that's the kind of difference that exists. And why, but, but that, that difference is not in existence, you know, outside India. So I think, you know, there is a lot of, these are all calling for investment. Investment, you need to, you know, invest on people, you need to invest on infrastructure, you need to invest on, a, you know, certain ideas. So I think that is something which is, you need to invest in technology. You know, people talked about, bite-sized education. In today, in the corporate world, you know, hybrid, edu hybrid education is what matters. You know, bite-sized education, these are like given. How much of it is, this, is there in existence when, you know, in, the, in, 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 in graduate programs or undergraduate or postgraduate program? Hardly there. You know, we are talking of the world is changing at a very fast pace. 
there is so much which is happening for example personally speaking my i mean i was the last person who ever wanted my daughter to go abroad for studies at least for undergraduate she decided to do a course which is not even available in india now the point is that that is the struggle today we have and i think there is a long way to go in terms of i want to trigger those thoughts uh, not really uh, limit myself to nice words but i think you know there are there are there is a huge huge gap in terms of investment investment in people investment in infrastructure i mean today if you go to a you know a, a corporate everybody is talking we are into a workplace consulting you know workplaces has to look very different you know today the you know there is a lot of investment which is happening into you know workplaces has to be designed in certain way so that people thrive you know you have new thoughts coming in how does the workplace look for a uh, you know uh, for a professor for a uh, you know accommodation it is those four walls of cabins you know that's the world that is in existence will that work really uh, you know environment make you thrive you know with new thoughts the answer is no so i think there is a lot of lot of new thoughts which has to come in the way we think the way we approach uh, you know the new world and that gap need to be bridged i think more and more such dialogues are important more and more such conversations are important and we need to think very differently thank you very much